Hi, this is Chan. Today we'll have a look at Bruno Fernandes, who was sensational since the moment he arrived at Manchester United. In particular, we'll have a deeper look at why he's such a footballing genius. All-round midfielder. As you all know, Bruno Fernandes is a midfielder, but the midfield position can be branched into a lot of specified positions and roles in modern football. The fact that Bruno can play in all of the roles available in the midfield position makes him an all-round midfielder. He can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder, a deep-lying playmaker, a half-wing, and also as a mezzala, which is a wide, central midfielder in a trio or a diamond. He can even play as a number 10 as well as a wide midfielder. Skillfulness. Bruno Fernandes is super technical. He uses the sole of his foot a lot when he receives the ball. What this means is that he's able to control the ball precisely even in a tight area, just like futsal. Because Bruno is so technically gifted, he's confident and comfortable when he receives the ball and never in a rush to do something, but rather he uses the pressure of opposition defenders. As examples, he fakes the shoot to alleviate the pressure like so, or disguises a long ball and gets past the defender and he's got so many of these effective skills in this locker. One tiny detail is in his movement as he receives the ball when there's pressure on him. He takes the advantage of the opposition's momentum and touches the ball into an empty space in front of him and runs away from the opposition. He shows this a lot when he's positioned in the pocket. As he goes to receive the ball in this area, a centre-back tries to put pressure on him to stop him from turning towards their goal. But Bruno checks his shoulder early before he receives the ball and runs away from the defender with a simple touch like this and cleverly uses the momentum of the center back to his advantage. As he's super technical with the ball, he gets involved in the build-up play from anywhere around the pitch. Just look at his touch map. Would you have believed this to be a touch map of an attacking midfielder? I mean, he really reminds me of legends like Zidane and Xavi Hernandez, who used to just compose every play in the middle of the park. Art of stopping. Modern football is rapidly evolving and it's sometimes hard to get the grasp of what's going on during a match. But Bruno Fernandez sometimes takes a second to think and I'd call this the art of stopping. I'll give you an example. In a situation where Bruno Fernandes is dribbling and the opposition defender tries to bother him by grabbing him and putting all sorts of pressure on him, Bruno Fernandes just stops there and then. So in other words, if he recognizes that he cannot run past the defender with speed, he takes a second to make sure to maintain possession of the ball by quickly stopping. And after that, he carries on with his play quite comfortably. Bruno Fernandes also lost the pattern play with the fullback. And he especially showed this a lot with the attack-minded fullback, Luke Shaw. Often during a match, after receiving the ball from Luke Shaw, Bruno signals Luke Shaw to go on an overlapping run and wait for the perfect timing to put in a through ball while standing still. And most importantly, he doesn't just take the easy passing option such as a pass towards the sideline into Luke Shaw's feet, but instead he slows down the tempo and waits for Luke Shaw to infiltrate the space behind the defence line and put in a through ball behind the defence and towards the goal. The fact that Bruno Fernandes stands still seems ineffective, but actually it's a really smart move to create a space for Luke Shaw. For example, if Bruno Fernandes dribbled forwards after receiving the ball and waited for Luke Shaw to overlap, his fullback would start to slowly back away towards his goal, so that when Luke Shaw starts to run in behind, the fullback can easily defend him as he was already moving in the right direction, so this cannot cause much threat. However, if Bruno Fernandes stops in this position after receiving the ball, this fullback thinks that he can close down the gap and put pressure on Bruno. In this instance, if Luke Shaw runs in behind and the ball is put through, the fullback is in a reverse motion, so it's impossible for the fullback back to catch him up because Luke Shaw is already sprinting at full pelt. This is how Bruno's stopping motion genuinely creates a lot more space for Luke Shaw to overlap in an attacking situation. Smart off the ball movements. Technical players that play pretty football generally aren't good with their off the ball movements, but Bruno Fernandes off the ball movements are excellent. For example, in this situation, Bruno receives the ball from the centre back and links it to the centre forward. As a midfielder, he tries to drop diagonally and receives the ball again, but because he checks that a left back is there already, he sprints towards the half space without hesitation, so the opposition defensive midfielder has to mark him. This sequence of movement creates a space right here, and so the centre forward can comfortably pass the ball to the left back. Bruno's infiltration into the half space in this instance was intended. He assessed his teammates' positions as well as the opposing player's position, and deliberately moved into a position to create space for his teammate. Bruno Fernandes sometimes runs in behind as well, and when he does, he's excellent at composing the tempo of his infiltrating run. In a situation like this, it seems as though Pogba will put the ball in behind the defence line where Bruno is waiting, but then Pogba passes the ball to Cavani who drops in. In this case, Bruno Fernandes quickly decelerates his run because he can't receive the ball anyway if he carries on with his run. If Cavani somehow makes a turn and he's able to put a ball through, Bruno accelerates rapidly and makes an attacking run again. So in short, he's just great at assessing the situation and composing the tempo of his runs to attack when the right opportunity comes while staying on side when he attacks. One more thing that's 
brilliant about him is his work ethic. He constantly looks for an empty space to receive the ball, even if his teammate doesn't pass the ball to him. He relentlessly drops in or moves up the field or moves to the side to receive the ball, taking second, third and fourth movements to receive the ball. On the contrary, Tammy Abraham used to do this. Manchester United's X Factor. Bruno Fernandes joined Manchester United in January 2020 and he quickly became the X Factor for Manchester United's second place finish in the 2020-21 season. Prior to the recruitment of Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United was sitting at fifth place. And if you look at the points table since the signing of Bruno Fernandes, Man United were first on the table. So am I suggesting that this was all because Bruno Fernandes single-handedly carried Manchester United by the scruff of the neck? Yes. Of course the other players played well, but Bruno Fernandes scored the most, assisted the most, took the most shots and created the most chances. Even if you look outside of Manchester United and compare his stats to other players in the Premier League, you can easily say that he was the best player for the rest of the season. So in that season, if you sum up the goals and assists since Bruno Fernandes joined Manchester United, Bruno comes first, then it's Salah, Kane and Son. One thing to note about Bruno Fernandes is that he adopted so quickly since signing for Manchester United. The success behind his quick adaption is sort of similar to a team lift out. A team lift out is a human resources term which describes the acquisition of a team rather than individual hiring. This term supposedly originated from Wall Street but it's actually really important and is becoming common in football too. Nowadays when a new manager is hired by a club the manager's coaching team is hired with him. Good examples of this are practiced by Mourinho, Guardiola and Klopp. The main advantage of a team lift out is that you can spend significantly less time adapting to a new working environment which consequently means that you can perform at the level that is expected of you quickly. This works the same for the players too because if there's a close friend of yours with the same nationality it becomes easier to adapt to a new environment. Specifically for Bruno Fernandes there was Dalo who is also Portuguese as well as Fred and Pereira who are Brazilian but speak Portuguese and apparently they helped Bruno to settle into Manchester United squad without difficulty. Vision. Just like any other elite player Bruno Fernandes always looks around with his head held up like a meerkat but one thing about Bruno is that he doesn't just look around his surrounding area but it's as though he's looking over the whole pitch from above especially that pass against Leipzig in the Champions League match where in a counter-attacking situation he put in a through ball behind the defense line with just one touch the timing was perfect and Leipzig defenders couldn't anticipate it this pass simply sums up Bruno Fernandes ability to pick out a pass and how his ability comes from analyzing the situation by always looking around before he received the ball Manchester United's legend Paul Scholes analyzed the match and said that only Bruno Fernandes can and pick out a pass like this. Oh, and sometimes Bruno Fernandes doesn't touch the ball at all. When Manchester United played Everton, there was a counter-attacking situation where a pass was made to Bruno Fernandes, but he didn't receive the ball but let it past him. And the next thing you know, a chance was created. If you look closely, you can see that Bruno Fernandes saw that Holgate was chasing him down, so he let the pass slip past him to create a chance for Rashford to score. It's so smart of him, right? This move just carried the momentum of the attack. But if this was Eric Lamella, Attack-minded player. Whenever there's a chance, Bruno Fernandes always plays the ball forward. His forward pass ratio is 76%. We say forward passes frequently, but why are forward passes so important in football? Let's have a look at three different situations. In the first scenario, you're defending and the opposing team passes the ball backwards. As a defender, you're immediately relieved from pressure and you can kind of rest. In the second scenario, if the opponent passes the ball sideways, you can jog to the side comfortably and sustain the distance between yourself and your teammate. So it's not too bad. You can cope with it and it doesn't tire you out. However, if a ball is progressed forwards, you basically have to get tight with the attacker. And there aren't any other options defensively. Otherwise, the attacker can dribble forwards like this or pass or shoot. They can basically do whatever they want if you don't get tight. So as a defender, it puts you under pressure and it's tiring. But anyways, Bruno Fernandes so often makes forward passes when he receives the ball. And when he progresses the ball forwards, rather than passing the ball to the wing, he progresses the ball centrally and specifically into the pocket. It, and in doing so, it troubles the opponent defenders a lot. On top of this, he consistently puts the ball in behind the defense line. Most midfield players are hesitant, and although they see the empty space behind the defense line, they become skeptical with their passing ability and end up taking safer option of passing the ball sideways or backwards. But Bruno Fernandes doesn't think twice when he sees the opportunity. He just commits to the pass without hesitation. So the level of pressure this puts on the defender is just unfathomable. It's just the worst thing you can face as a defender. 
defender because when the ball is put behind you, you have to turn your body around and sprint back as fast as possible. So it drains you out and one single defensive mistake in this area leads to a goal. In the season he joined Manchester United, Bruno attempted so many challenging passes forward so his pass success rate was not that high. It was only 75%. But this was not a big fuss because Jesse Lingard's pass success rate was 88% and he really didn't do that much that season. Chance creator. Before Bruno signed for United, he was already a god of creating chances at Sporting Lisbon. He was the number one chance maker in the Portuguese league in the 2019-20 season with 63 chances created. In second place was Pizzi. He created 45 chances throughout the season. It's quite a big difference, right? His stats since joining United is more amazing. He joined in January 2020 and created 116 chances until the end of the season. Second and third places were Mata with 50 chances and Martial with 46 chances. The gap between Bruno Fernandes and Mata is just unbelievable. He's still up there alongside Kevin De Bruyne in the number of chances created. The reason behind his staggering chance making stat is in the intricacy of his passes. First of all, Bruno's passes are so perfect that it's comfortable to receive. For example, his forward pass towards his centre forward partner is really well timed and accurately in line with the running course that it simply lands in his feet. Also, he sometimes kicks the ball with the outside of his foot to bend the pass towards the goal and he puts a backspin on the ball so that it lands right in front of the forward player. He basically puts himself in the shoes of the receiving player and delivers the ball the way he would want the ball to be delivered. I would go as far as to say that even a little kid can receive a nice pass like this too. In some situations, a strong and fast pass is more beneficial. For example, in the situation, if a pass to Martial is slow, Martial needs to touch the ball and turn, which means that he would have to face a one-on-one -on -one situation against a defender. So a weak pass is not helpful at all. But a strong pass made by Bruno Fernandes allows Martial to touch the ball and shoot straight away, or he can even touch the ball into an empty space and take a shot there. But the problem is, Martial hasn't been in great form and can't finish these off. Not only can Bruno create chances, but there's a reason that Bruno Fernandes can stack up so many assists as well. It's the fact that he passes the ball in such a way that his teammate can shoot straight away. For instance, if Bruno Fernandes was dribbling forward with a defender in front of him, he passes the ball to a teammate that's alongside him who can shoot straight away. The pass rolls super nicely to his teammate that he instinctively knows that he needs to shoot right away because the pass was made with intent. Oh, and there was one time when a fast cross was put into the box from the wing and it was softly touched down by Bruno Fernandes then fell perfectly in front of Martial to shoot, but Martial just missed anyway. The quality of his passes were also shown in a counter-attacking situation against Everton. There were four United players attacking and two Everton players defending. An average player in this situation would quickly pass the ball to the side and run inside the box like this or like this. This isn't all that bad, but if the defender manages to successfully squeeze the attacker out to the side, it may not lead to a goal in the end. However, Bruno with his confidence draws the defender out of their position before passing the ball to Cavani. And when he makes the pass, he feints a little dummy shot. This is all deliberately planned to give more time and space for Cavani so that he has more chance of converting it into a goal. As I mentioned so many times in this video, the quality of his passes are so good. Because he knows that Cavani is right footed, he puts the ball so that Cavani can touch the ball inwards and shoot right away and composes the course, speed and timing of the pass perfectly to a T. So there's a reason that Bruno Fernandes has so many assists. To score a goal, the last pass of an attacking sequence is key and the player who don't have a good assisting stat are generally terrible at delivering a good pass at the end. I do talk about Sterling a lot when it comes to awful finishing but the pass from his teammate was sometimes way too fast. Moving back to Bruno Fernandes again on this matter, the quality of his passes before a goal is at this level. Goal scoring ability. Bruno Fernandes is super clinical too and his right footed long range shot is a specialty. The horizontal axis from this graph shows shots per 90 and the vertical axis shows the shot accuracy. As you can see, both his shot accuracy and shots per 90 are not that bad at all. If you look closely when he takes long range shots, his run up to the shot isn't that long. Instead, he takes two to three steps and takes a shot. Normally, when you see a player take a long run up, you can easily sense that he's going to take a shot. So the defenders would get tight with him. But because of Bruno's short run up, defenders have less time to get tight with him. Not only this, 
this, but his infiltration into the box to score a goal is equally brilliant. It kind of reminds me of Lampard and Scholes because it takes bold chances when they come and finishes them off pretty confidently. Although he hasn't scored that many goals this season, he scored 18 Premier League goals in the season he signed for United and he's played since January. Dead ball specialist. A dead ball situation is when a ball is not moving. A set piece situation in other words. Bruno is a specialist in these dead ball situations. I mean his free kicks man. He sure can whip the ball properly so there's not much to say about it. So aside from his technique, there's one interesting set piece pattern that United often uses. Bruno Fernandes pretends to prepare for a shot on goal and all of a sudden he chips the ball behind the free kick wall then Martial who is waiting for this ball runs into where the ball is going to land and finishes it off. Teams that have faced United would have prepared to defend against this but this pattern play still worked so many times. Also you can't dissociate Bruno Fernandes and penalties. An average success rate for penalty kicks in general is 77%. Messi's success rate is 77%. Kane is at 84% but Bruno is at a staggering 90%. Throughout his entire career he's only missed 5 penalties out of 49 attempts. You'd probably know Bruno's famous penalties. His routine is similar to Jorginho's penalty as they both jump before they kick. While he's in the air he checks the goalkeeper's initial movement and directs the shot in the bottom corner of the opposite direction. So it's super difficult for a goalkeeper to stop. But there's another minor detail in Bruno's penalties. From when he's in the air to when he kicks the ball, he does a little dummy motion. So from the goalie's perspective, it looks like Bruno's going to hit the ball to the left and goes right, and vice versa for the other direction too. One more intricate detail is in the height of his jumps because they're always different. What I mean by this is he sometimes jumps really high and sometimes he just hops a little bit. So in turn, the timing of the kicks are always going to be different and confuses the goalkeeper even more. And on top of this, he sometimes just blasts it and he scored this way against Lloris. I think the variations of his spot kicks are smart because before the success of penalty kicks simply boiled down to the direction of the kicker's shot and the direction of the keeper's diving direction. However, Bruno makes the goalkeeper to worry about when he's going to hit the ball with the run-up jump. So as a goalkeeper, you get stuck in between so many different outcomes and the goal stopping becomes too hard. Loyalty. When Bruno Fernandes was playing for Sporting Lisbon, an audio recording of him talking badly about his teammate was leaked. But funnily enough, he was heavily praised when the recorded file was released in public. In the audio, he was questioned about why he slammed his teammates and he said, Bro, I don't say anything. Honestly, if you want me to tell you, I'd rather not comment on anything. I think very badly of the attitude of some players. Actually, not an attitude. Attitudes that don't exist. There are players that have no attitude here, bro. They don't want to be here. They don't want to play. They don't want to be here. Then fuck off. Let them say they don't want to play. They spend the year here getting money and then they fuck off, bro. Shit attitude, bro, for fuck's sake. In the video, you can see that he heavily criticizes the unprofessional attitude of his teammates and indirectly shows his gratitude towards the fans and the passion for the club. And in his last Sporting Lisbon interview, he was in so much tears. His loyalty is still the same at Manchester United. In one Europa League game, he was subbed off and Solskjaer told him to take a shower in the locker room because it was cold and there was not much left to see out the match. However, Bruno Fernandes put his coat on and said he'll see his team finish the match. So how can a manager not like him? Whilst other United players drive around in their Bentleys, Range Rovers, Rolls Royces, Mercedes and Audis, Bruno Fernandes drives around in Mini. He's just such a humble, down-to-earth kind of football player who just wants to focus on football. What I don't understand is how Lingard's wage was half as much higher than Bruno Fernandes' wage until he signed a new contract. Anyways, that's it for today. Unfortunately, we haven't seen too much of Bruno Fernandes this season, but I hope that he'll be back in great form in the near future. I'll see you again in my next video. So cheers and peace!